Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Tuition. In this tutorial, we are going to create this advanced shopping cart. We will create this shopping cart using PHP and MySQL database. I will first design the shopping cart and then add add to cart functionality. But before we get started, make sure you have a basic understanding of PHP and MySQL database. Along with that, you should have a knowledge about HTML and CSS. So you can easily understand everything. Now let me first explain what we are going to create in this tutorial. So in this shopping cart tutorial, we're going to create four shopping cart items. In these items, I have a laptop, headphones, tablet, and mobile. And using Boost App Card, we're going to display this product information in the shopping cart. On the top, I have a header and on the right side of the screen, I have this card. And here, I'm going to display how many cards items are there in the card. So at this time, I have zero items in the card. Now, I want to add this Xperia tablet in this card. So I will just click on this add to cart button and as you can see this product added in the cart. So on the top right corner I have one card item. Just after that I want to add this Apple MacBook Pro and the Sony E7 headphones in the shopping cart. So I will just click on this add to cart button and add these products in the shopping bucket. Now to see the shopping bucket list just click on this cart. So as you can see here I have three products in this cart. I have my shopping cart items with their price and the total. Now in my cart section, you can see your shopping cart list and on the right side, you have the number of products and its total payable amount. Now let's say I want to remove this product from the shopping cart list. Then I'm going to just click on this remove button. So when we click on this remove button, we are going to see a message product has been removed. And as you can see, this product has been removed from the shopping cart list. And then I want to remove this MacBook Pro so I can do that as well. So I will just click on this remove button and say OK to this message. So as you can see, I have only one product in the card. Both product have been removed from the card. If you want, you can add them whenever you want. Now let's say I want to add this product in the card. And then I try to add this product in the card again. When I do that, I'm going to get this message product is already added in the card. So we cannot add the same product more than one. So this is what we are going to create in this tutorial. Follow me from the beginning if you are a beginner. So before we getting late, let's get started. Now first, if you wanted to work with PHP, you need a web server. So I'm going to use here exam web server to execute my PHP file and work with MySQL database. So as you can see here, I have exam control panel and I'm going to start the Apache server. So I'm going to click on this start button and I also wanted to start the MySQL server. So I'm going to just click on this start MySQL server, right? So once I start the web server, I can execute my PHP files in the browser. Now here, as you can see, I have this PHP Storm IDE open. If you want, you can use Atom, Sublime Text or Visual Studio Code, whatever you like. You need to create your PHP file in this exam htdoc folder. So in this exam htdoc folder, I have this tutorial folder. In this folder, I'm going to create a new project. So I'm going to right click here and just say new directory and create a new directory shopping. I already have this folder here, so I'm not going to create a new folder. So in this directory, I'm going to create a new folder. So I'm going to right click here and say new directory and name this folder upload. In this folder, I have four images, which we are going to use in this tutorial. So as you can see, in this file, I have four images, which we are going to use in this tutorial. So I'm going to just minimize this upload folder, select this shopping folder, right click here and say new PHP file and name this file index.php, right? So I'm going to just say here index and press enter. So this is going to create a new file index.php. So we're going to use this index.php file as a template. So we're going to design the shopping cart tutorial in this file. So I'm going to get rid of this PHP script and just add exclamation mark here and press tab. So this is going to add here a simple HTML5 snippet with meta tag, title and the body of the HTML document. I'm going to change the title. So I'm going to change this title to shopping cart. Now in this title, I'm going to add few libraries to glorify this template. So I'm going to use Bootstrap to glorify this template. I also wanted to include icons in this project. So I'm going to use Font Awesome website. So to use predefined CSS style, I'm going to use Bootstrap website. So I'm going to just open the Bootstrap website. So in the URL, just type getbootstrap.com and just open this Bootstrap website. Just click on this get started. 
and just copy this CDN and paste it in the head right here. Just after that, I'm going to just copy these JS files and paste it in the body before the closing body section. Now, just after that, I want to use icons in my project. So I'm going to just open the font awesome website. So just type fontawesome.com and from this website, just click on the start. So here you just need to specify your email address and click on this create and use this kit. So once you've done that, the font awesome website will send the font awesome kit to your email address. Instead of doing this, instead of doing this, I'm going to just open this new tab and say here font awesome CDN. And using this CDN, I'm going to use font awesome icon. So from this bootstrap CDN website, I'm going to just click on this drop down and copy this HTML. Right. And just paste this HTML in this head right here. Just create a command and name this command font awesome right i'm going to name this link as well and name this link bootstrap cdn now once you've done that just open this file in the browser to open this file in the browser just open the browser close your tabs and just type here a server name so i'm going to say here localhost forward slash name of your folder so as you can see i have here a tutorial folder I have this project in this tutorial folder so i'm going to specify here tutorial then specify the project name i'm going to specify the shopping here so i'm going to just say here shopping and specify the file name i'm going to specify index.php and press enter so as you can see i have this shopping cart file open in the browser right so if i just specify here h1 heading tag and say welcome shopping cart then as you can see when i reload this page you can see this welcome shopping cart text here in this file i'm going to create a simple shopping cart template so i'm going to get rid of this h1 heading tag and right here i'm going to create a container so i'm going to create here a division tag and create a class and specify here container so instead of doing this i'm going to just specify dot here specify the class name container and press tab so this will create a division tag with the class container now in this division tag i'm going to create a row so i'm going to just say here row and to this row i want all the text to the center of this division tag so i'm going to just say here text center bootstrap class and also i want padding y so this will specify top and bottom padding to this division tag so i'm going to say padding y 5 so this is a bootstrap class right so in this division tag, I want to create four shopping cart items. So in this row, I'm going to add bootstrap grid system. So as you know, bootstrap has 12 column grid system. So I'm going to use this bootstrap grid system to create four equal columns. So here I'm going to just create a new class called MD3. So this class will specify three column space to this division tag for medium size of devices. Now. Just after that, I'm going to specify here another class which is call SM6. So I want to specify six column space for this division tag for small size of devices. And just after that, I want to specify margin Y which will specify top and bottom padding to this division tag. So I'm going to specify margin Y3 here. And I don't want to specify this margin Y to medium size of devices. So I'm going to say margin Y MD0. Now. So as you can see, this division tag will take three column space from 12 column of bootstrap grid system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this division tag, paste it here, paste it here and paste it here. So this will create four columns of equal width. And in the first column right here, I'm going to add a form tag and in the action attribute, I'm going to say index.php file. And just after that, I'm going to specify method attribute to post this data so i'm going to say post method here now in this form tag i'm going to create a new division tag with the class card and shadow in this div i'm going to create a division tag and specify image tag inside of this div and in the source attribute i want to specify a path of my image so i will just say here dot forward slash specify my upload folder and then specify my product one dot png file here and in the alt attribute, I'm going to say image one. 
and to this image i'm going to specify a class img fluid and also i'm going to specify card img top class to this image now just after that just after this division tag right here i'm going to create a new division tag with the class card body and in this div i will first create h5 heading tag with the name of product and to this h5 heading tag i'm going to specify class card title and just specify a name for my first product so i will just say here product one just after that i'm going to create here h6 heading tag and in this h6 heading tag i'm going to add few font or some icons so i want to use here star icon so i'm going to just add here i tag and specify class to add icons so i'm going to say here fast fa star save the changes and when i execute this file you can see you have this card with this image name of your product and your icon but as you can see this icon is not loading to solve this problem we need to update the font awesome cdn for that i'm going to just open a new tab and just search here font awesome cdn and from this website cdnjs.com i'm going to just copy so i'm going to just copy this link tag and just paste it by replacing this link so i'm going to just get rid of this link and paste this link right here save the changes when i reload this application so as you can see you have this star icon here just after that i'm going to just add few more star here to specify rating of these products so i'm going to just copy this i tag paste it here paste it here and paste it here and just after that for the fifth star i'm going to just specify a class f a r f a star so this is going to specify an empty star here like this just after that just after this h6 heading tag right here I'm going to create a paragraph with the class card text and in this paragraph I want to add some demo text so I'm going to say some quick example text to build on the card on the card now just after that I'm going to add here h5 heading tag and in this h5 heading tag I'm going to add span tag with the class price and in this price tag i'm going to just add a price of this product so i'm going to just say here 599 save the changes reload the application you have your product name rating of your product description of your product and the price of your product so as you can see this is the discounted price of this product i want to display the actual price of this product as well so i'm going to just add here small tag and in this small tag i will add s tag in this s tag i'm going to display the actual price of this product so i'm going to say 519 save the changes and when i reload this page you can see you have this actual price with this stroke to add this stroke don't forget to use this s tag now i want to change this color of this text so i'm going to just say here class text secondary so this is going to change this text color just after that, just after this H5 heading tag, right here, I'm going to add a button. So I will just say here, button, specify type, submit, specify name, add, and just specify text, add to cart. I also want to add icon with this text. So I'm going to just add here, I tag with the class class FA shopping cart save the changes and when i reload this application you can see i have this add to cart button with this shopping cart icon now to change the style of this button i'm going to add a class here and specify btn btn warning class or bootstrap and just after that i'm going to say margin y so i'm going to add top and bottom margin to this button three when i reload this application you can see i have this add to cart button with with predefined style just after that what i want i want to specify some custom styling to this product so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just create here a new file so i'm going to right click here and say new 
style sheet and name the style sheet style i'm going to link this style to this index.php file so right here i'm going to create here a link tag and in the href attribute i will specify style.css file to link this to link the style.css file to this index.php file in the style.css file i'm going to add few style to this card so i'm going to first select image tag and specify max width 100% then i will specify height auto and background color is going to be light blue now just after that i'm going to specify the background gradient color to this image so i will just say here background radial gradient and just specify here the first value white 30 percent and light blue 70 percent just after that i'm going to select this fa star and also select fa star half and specify color yellow green and then i will say padding three percent and zero percent and when you reload your application so as you can see you have this background gradient color with your product name rating of your product then you have this description the actual price and the discounted price and add to cart button now i want to add three more product in this template so i'm going to just open the index.php file I'm going to just copy this form so I'm going to just copy this form tag and paste it here in the second column right here reload the page you can see you have your second product if I copy and paste that in the third column you have your third product and if you copy and paste that in the fourth column you have your fourth product if I reload this page you can see you have your four product here now if you're a programmer then repeating yourself is not good for a healthy programmer to solve this problem I'm going to get rid of these form tags and just copy this form tag and just use this product code. So I'm going to just expand this form tag and just copy this code. So I'm going to just minimize this call empty three class, copy this code and put this code in the function. So when I create a new function, I can use that function multiple times with the same code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create here a new directory and name this directory PHP. In this PHP directory, I'm going to create a new file component. In this component file, I'm going to create a function component. In this function, in this function, I'm going to create a variable element. And to this variable, in the double code, I'm going to specify this code. I'm going to just copy this call md3 class division tag and paste that in this double code right here. And just after that, just say here, echo element. Save the changes. Just include this file in index.php file right here. So I'm going to just add here PHP script. And just say here, require once php component.php. And just call this function in this row. Right? So I'm going to get rid of this statement. So I'm going to get rid of all these columns and if I just call this component function here, so if I just add here a PHP script and call the component function, I have here this product, right? If I call this component function again, again, again and again, I have four products here. So it's very simple. So as a healthy programmer, you don't need to repeat yourself. Using function, you can repeat the same code multiple times. Now what I want, I want to change this image, this product name and this price. So to do that, I'm going to just open the component.php file and in this function, I'm going to pass few parameters. So I'm going to just say here product name and specify this parameter instead of specifying this hard coded value. So I'm going to get rid of this product one and specify product name here. Just after that, specify the second argument, product, price. 
and instead of specifying the hard coded value i'm going to just say here product price and just after that specify the third argument product image and just specify this argument instead of specifying this source attribute right here product image here and save the changes open index.php file and here when we call this function we need to pass these arguments right so i'm going to just pass this argument in this function so the first argument is product name so i'm going to say here product one then i will specify the second argument product price so i'm going to just specify the price of this product so i will just say 599 just after that i'm going to specify the product image so here i want to specify the path of my image so i will just say here dot forward slash upload product one dot png save the changes you can see you have your first product with these arguments now if i just copy this function paste it here and change this product one to product two change this price to 99 and change this image to product two and when i reload this page you can see you have your second product with product two different price and different image you can do the same thing by calling this function again by changing this product name then changing this price and the path of your image like this i can do the same for the fourth product as well so i'll just see here product 4 4.99 and product 4.png save the changes and if i reload the application you can see i have my four products here right now what i want i want to get this product name this image and this product price from the database so i don't need to put these values manually instead of doing this i'm going to get these values from the database and create these products now what i want i want to specify all these arguments from the database so i don't need to specify these argument values manually so instead of doing this i'm going to create a new database with a new table and insert these arguments in that database so in this tutorial i'm not going to use a user interface to create a new database and the table instead of doing this i'm going to create a new database and table using php script i want to show you how you can create mysql database and table using php script and how you can use that module to your any application so if you're interested to know how you can create a module in php then this is the best time to understand it so let's see how you can create a module in php and create mysql database with table using php script i'm going to create here a new file in this php folder so i'm going to right click here and say new php class so i'm going to create here a new class and name this class create db and press ok so this is going to create a new class create db i'm going to use this class as a module so you can use this class of your any php application but let me first explain why we are going to create this class using this class we're going to create a new database with new table and just after that we're going to insert product information in that table instead of creating a new database using user interface of php my admin we're going to use php script to create this database so we're going to simply create a new php module to create this database and the table you can use this class to any php application to create your new database and the table let me show you how you can create a new database using a php script so in this class we're going to first create few properties to this class so i'm going to first create a new property so i'll just specify a scope for this property so i'll just say here public and specify the name of my property so i'm going to say here server name then i will create my second property and specify a scope public username then i'm going to say here public password then i will create a new property db name then create a new property table name and the last we're going to create a new property connection now just after that here i'm going to create a class constructor so i'm going to just say here public function double underscore constructor in this constructor i'm going to pass parameter so the first parameter 
is db name and i also wanted to specify the default value for this property so i'm going to pass the default value here and specify default database name new db then i'm going to pass here table name is equal to product db then i'm going to say here server name is equal to localhost then i'm going to call here username root and password is going to be empty string just after that now in this constructor i'm going to initialize this argument with these properties so what i'm going to do is i'm going to call here this keyword and just call the properties so i'm going to say here db name is equal to db name then i will say this table name is equal to table name so one by one i'm going to initialize all these arguments with these properties so right here just after this table name i'm going to say this server name is equal to server name then i will say this username is equal to username and the last i'm going to say this password is equal to password in this constructor right here i'm going to create a new connection so i'm going to create here a command and say create connection to create a new connection I'm going to just call this connection property right so i'm going to initialize this property right here so i'll just call this operator to call the connection property and i'm going to initialize this connection property with mysqli connect function so i'm going to just call here mysqli connect function so this function opens a new connection to the mysql server so the first argument is the host name so i will just specify the host name here so i have my host name localhost so i'm going to pass this parameter right here i'm going to pass the username so i will just say here username i'm going to pass the password so i'm going to pass password variable here and just close this statement when we have this connection i'm going to check that connection so i will just say here check connection now if if we don't have valid connection so i'm going to call this connection then i want to die this application so I'm going to call die function with a message connection failed and along with that I'm going to concatenate an error message here. So I'm going to say my SQLI connect error. Now just after that right here I want to create a new database. Now just after that once we have the valid connection I'm going to create here a query. The query used to create a new database. So I'm going to just create here SQL variable and just specify in the double quote create database if not exist and specify the database name here so I'm going to pass here db name variable so whatever you specify to this db name variable this is going to create this new database with that name now just after that to execute this query I'm going to just create here a command and just say here execute query and to execute this query i'm going to say if my sqli query and then the first argument is the connection property so i'm going to call this connection and then pass the sql query so i'm going to call sql here so if you have the valid connection and the valid statement this is going to execute this if block now in this if block right here once this database is created i'm going to select that database and specify to this connection property so to do that i'm going to just say here this connection property is equal to mysql connect and then specify the server name localhost username root then specify password and then specify the database name so we have this database so i'm going to pass this db name right here so now in this connection property we have this database so now we can create a new table using this connection property so to create a new table i'm going to create here a command sql to create new table to create a table i'm going to create to create a table i will just create here variable sql and initialize this variable with sql command so i'm going to say here create table if not exist and specify the table name so I have this table name variable so I'm going to pass that variable name right here and just after that I'm going to create here table fields 
and to create a table i'm going to put that in the parenthesis and just create a first field id integer 11 specify not now auto increment and specify primary key just after that i'm going to create the second field which is product name then specify the type where care 25 and specify not now then create third field product price and specify type float and the last i'm going to create here product image to store image path and just specify here where care 100 and just close this statement just after that to execute this statement i'm going to just say here if and in the if statement i'm going to call my sql query and just specify the connection property first so i'm going to call here this connection and then call the sql query here right now if this query is not successful then i'm going to execute this if block so i'm going to pass here exclamation mark if the statement failed to execute this query i'm going to send an error message so i'm going to say here echo error creating table and then concatenate an error message with this dot so i'm going to say here my sql error and then pass here connection property so i'm going to call this connection and now if anything goes wrong and if this if condition is not execute then i'm going to execute this else condition here so i'm going to say here else and just say here return false save the change and now if you call this file in index.php file right here on the top and if i just say here require once php create db.php and if you create an instance of this create db class like this and if i just create here an instance of this class so i'm going to just create here a command and say create instance of create db class so i'm going to create here new instance i will just see here database is the name of this instance and to create an instance of this class i'm going to say new keyword and then call create db class here so if you leave this parameter as it is then this gonna create this database name new db but i don't want to specify this name to this database instead of specifying the default name i'm gonna pass here a new name to this database so i'm gonna pass here product db so this is the name of my database and i want to pass table name to this database so i'm gonna pass here product db right so the name of my database is product db and the name of my table is product db now save the changes and just open the exam server first and just click on this admin to open this mysql database and now here you can see i have php my admin open now i have few database here and now i want to create a new database with the name product db so instead of creating a new database right from here i'm going to execute this file again so i'm going to just reload this application and when i reload it i'm going to have here creating error message so this says that i have an error in sql syntax so i'm going to open this up open the create db.php file oops i need to specify here comma like this save the changes and when i execute this application again you can see i have this database in php my admin when i refresh this database you can see i have this product db database and in that database i have this product db table so using php script we had created this database and the table now we know that how to create a php module to create a new database and the table so in this table i want to insert product information so we can display them in these cards instead of inserting this product one product two and all that information we're gonna get the information from this database and display them right here so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna insert product information in this table so i'm gonna say here a command in the sql statement so i'm gonna just say here insert into and specify the table name so i'm gonna specify here product db i want to insert rows in this table so i want to insert 
product name product price and product image and just after that i want to insert values so i'm going to say here values and i want to insert first value so i'm going to first specify here product name so i'm going to just say here apple macbook pro so this is the name of my first product then i'm going to specify the product price so i'm going to say here 1799 and then specify the image path the source of the image so i'm going to just say here dot forward slash upload so this is the upload folder and then specify the name of my image so i'm going to say here product one dot png so i'm going to just specify the source path of that particular product image just after that i want to insert multiple values so i'm going to specify comma here and just copy the statement paste it here and just change these values so i'm going to do that very quickly and insert these values in this table now i'm going to insert these values in this table so i'm going to just execute this command so i'm going to just click on this go button when i click on this go button this is going to insert these values in this table so when i open this table you can see i have four rows in this table and each row has its unique id on id 1 i have macbook pro on id 2 i have sony e7 headphones id 3 i have sony xperia and on id 4 i have this samsung galaxy a15 mobile so using this id i can identify each product so this id is unique and important to get the information of that product so we're going to use this id to get the information of the particular product once we have this information i'm going to display all this information in this card to display this information i'm going to just back to my create db.php file and right here just after this constructor i'm going to create here a method so i'm going to create here a command get product from the database so i'm going to just specify the public scope and then specify function keyword and just say here get data so this is a method get data and i want to get data from the database so i'm going to first create here sql query so i'm going to say sql select star from table name so i have here this table name so i'm going to get all the fields from this table and i'm going to get this result in the result variable so i'm going to just say here result and just execute this statement to execute this statement i'm going to call here my sqli query and the first argument is the connection string so i'm going to just call this connection and the second is the sql query so in this variable i have this information right the product information just after that if my sqli number of rows and then pass the result variable here is greater than zero then i want to return this result right if i have more than zero rows in this table i'm going to return this result variable to this method just after that once we have this result variable i can get this result variable and display all the information in this card so this method return the result variable in this result variable i have this information right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to open index.php file and instead of calling this function multiple times i'm going to get rid of this function and this hard coded values and in this php statement i will just say result is equal to call the database instance this one right here and just call the get data method right now you know that this method return a result in this variable so i have this result in this variable so i can iterate that result and display all the information in this card so i'm going to just say here while row is equal to my sqli fetch associative array and then specify here result variable so now i'm going to get all these rows one by one and just create a new card here so i'm going to call here component function 
and in the first parameter I'm going to pass product name so I will just say here row and pass product name here so I'm going to pass the value from the database now just after that I'm going to pass the second argument so I'm going to pass here row product price and just after that I'm going to call row product image save the changes and when I execute this application you can see I have this different information filled automatically using this database value so what we had done here I had just get these values in this result variable and iterate them one by one and using this component function I had just specified these values as an argument and display them in the card right here now let me first explain what we had done so far we just created index.php file and just created four cards in this card we have product image title price and add to card button we're going to create this ui using component function we created this function in component.php file right here and we had called this function in index.php file in the while loop to create a new database we use create db module using this module we had created a new database with new table and we also have here a new method which we use to get the data of the particular table so to get the data of this table we use this get data method now using this method we're going to return this result and get that result in the result variable right here now once we have this result i'm going to iterate that result and as you can see here we're going to get each row one by one and specify that values to the component function and create four cards in the ui now let's move on and add shopping cart functionality to this application when we click on this add to cart button i want to store this product information in the session variable so we're going to create a simple session variable and store the id of this product instead of storing this product name product price and the product image we're going to just store the product id in that session variable so we can access this id and get the information from the database let me show you how we can do that to create a session variable you need to first start this session so to start the session i'm going to say here a command start session to create modify and delete session variable you need to start the session variable you need to start the session so i'm going to say here session start just after that right here if we click on this add to cart button i want to execute this if block so i'm going to just say here if is set post and just call add button here so as you can see if you open this component function you can see we just specified this add name to this button now what i'm going to do is when i click on this add to cart button i want to post the id of this product now when i click on this add to cart button i want to return the product id to do that i'm going to just open the component.php file and in this file i'm going to just create here input hidden tag so i'm going to just say input type hidden specify name product id and i want to pass here a variable so i'm going to just pass here a parameter product id and i'm going to pass that variable right here in this value so i'm going to just say here product id right and when i call this function in index.php file right here i want to pass this fourth argument so i'm going to pass here row id so in this input tag value i have product id so to get this value i'm going to just open the index.php file and when i click on this add button i'm going to say print r using the post method i can get the post value so to get this value i'm going to just call the name of this input tag so i'm going to just say product id save the changes so if i just click on this third product right here i can get the id of this product so if i just click on this add to cart button i can get three here and if i just click on this first product i'm going to get one here right so you know that how you can get the id of the product now what i want i want to create session variable and store this id in that variable so i'm going to just comment here to the statement and here i'm going to check if is set session variable 
cart. Now if this variable is already being set, I'm going to execute this if block or execute this else block. So if this session variable is set, I'm going to execute this if block or execute this else block. Now if the session variable is not being set, I'm going to create an array and specify name item array and just see here array and in this array i'm going to pass key product id and in the value i'm going to pass this id right so i'm going to just say here post product id and just after that i'm going to create here a session variable so i'm going to just say here create new session variable and say here session name the session variable card and on the zero index of this session variable i'm going to store this array so i will just say here item array just after that i want to print this array on the document so you can understand what we are going to store in this array so i'm going to just say here session card right if we already have this session variable i'm going to print that in the if block right save the changes reload the application so as you can see i have this second product in my cart so you can see here on zero index i have this product id 2 now as you can see you have this product id 2 in this variable now if you want to add this third product and if you click on this add to cart button you're not going to get this third id in this array because as you can see here if the session variable is set i'm going to execute this if block or execute this else block so this application is not going to execute this else block because the session variable is already being set so this application is going to execute this if block because the session variable is set if the session variable is set what i want I want to check if this product is already being in the session variable or not. If the product is in the session variable, I want to print a message product is already added in the cart. Right? I'm going to just call a function array column and just say here session cart. And in the second argument, I'm going to pass product id. So this function is going to return an array of product id let me show you if i just store this array in the variable so if i just say here item array id and if i just say here print r item array id i'm going to get rid of this statement so as you can see you have this id2 in this array now you know that you have this second product in your session variable now if i just say here if in array post product id and if i just say here item array id if this product id is in this array i'm going to execute this if block or execute this else block now let's say if i have this product id in this array i'm going to just print here echo statement and in the double code i'm going to call a script tag and just say alert product is already added in the cart right and just after that i'm going to redirect this page so i'm going to just say double quote call the script tag and just say window dot location is equal to index dot php now you know that I have this second product in this array. If I click on the second product again, you are going to get this message product is already added in the card. Now just after that, if I don't have this product in the array, I want to add this product in that session variable. Right? To do that, I am going to just get rid of this statement and just here in this else statement right here. Now if the product is in the session variable, I am going to print this message product is already added in the card or if the product is not in the session variable i'm going to add that product in the session variable to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to just call here 
count function so i'm going to just see here count and just say session here and just call here session variable count now this count function returns how many items are there in this session variable this count function is going to return number of elements in the array so this function is going to return number of elements in the array and i'm going to store that elements in the count variable so just after that what i'm going to do is i'm going to call this array right here and just after that i'm going to call this session variable cart and on the count index i'm going to store this item array just after that i'm going to just print this session variable on the document reload the application and when i click on this add to cart button you're going to get a message product is already added in the cart and if you click on this third items you're going to see you have on the zero index you have this product id 2 and on the first index you have this product id 3 right so in the session variable you have this second and this third product now if you try to insert this product again you're going to get this message product is already added in the cart right as simple as that now once you have this product in the session variable you can get the product information from the database and print that in the shopping cart list let me show you how but before we do that i'm going to get rid of this statement and i want to add here a header to display how many items are there in the card so i'm going to create header so i'm going to just create a new file in this php folder so i'm going to right click here and say new php file and name this file header now what i want i want to use this header more than once so in this file i'm going to create a header so I'm going to say here header and specify ID header, right? In this header, what I want, I want to create a navigation menu. So I'm going to create a bootstrap nav. So I'm going to call the nav class and specify class navbar, navbar expand lg. Then I'm going to call navbar dark class and call pg dark class. Just after that, in this navigation menu, I'm going to call anchor tag with navbar brand class. And in the href attribute, I want to specify the index.php file. So I'm going to say index.php. Just after that, in this anchor tag, I'm going to call h3 heading tag with the class padding x5. And in this h3 heading tag, I'm going to just add an icon and the text. So I'm going to call here i tag with the class fans fa shopping basket just after that i'm going to specify a text here shopping cart and just after that i'm going to call this file in index.php just before this container right here so i'm going to just add here php script and just say require once and just call php header.php Save the changes and when I reload this application, you can see you have this shopping cart header here. Now just after that, in the header.php file, what I want, just after this anchor tag, I'm going to create here a button. In this button, I'm going to specify a class navbar toggler. Now just after that, right here, I'm going to call type button, then I'm going to call data toggle property collapse then i'm going to say data target property now bar nav alt markup and then i'm going to say area control now bar nav alt markup and area expanded false and the last booster property is area label toggle navigation now just after that in this button i'm going to call a spawn tag with the class navbar toggler icon now just after this button i'm going to create here a division tag with the class collapse along with that i want to add navbar 
collapse and I want to specify ID never now alt markup now in this division tag I'm going to create another div with the class margin right auto and just after that I'm going to create another div with the class navbar now and now in this navigation menu I'm going to create an anchor tag with the class now item now item along with that I will just say here active class and just after that in the href attribute I'm going to just specify here cart.php file which we are going to create after a few minutes now in this anchor tag I'm going to just create h5 reading tag with the class padding x5 so this class is going to add top and bottom padding to this h5 heading tag and I'm going to just specify the custom CSS class cart I'm going to just add an icon of shopping cart so I'm going to just add i tag here and just specify class fas fast fa shopping cart and specify text cart here save the changes reload the file now as you can see you have this card here to change the color and the border i'm going to just specify here to this anchor tag now link class reload the page and as you can see you have this card with white color right i'm going to just add some space i just want to specify the items right here so i'm going to specify zero here so right now i have zero card items in the shopping cart i'm going to just specify some styling to this zero so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just get rid of this zero and call here a spawn tag and specify id card count and here i want to specify zero and just after that i'm going to just copy this card count and in the style.css file i'm going to just say card count and just specify here text align center then i'm going to say padding zero for the top 0.9 rem for the left 0.1 rem for the bottom and 0.9 rem to the left side just after that i'm going to specify border radius 3 rem save the changes and when i reload the page i have this zero here i want to specify some text color and the background color to this count variable now just after that to this card count id i'm going to just specify class and just say text warning and pg light color save the changes when i reload this application you can see this type of result now what i want i want to display how many products are there in this card to do that i'm going to get rid of this spawn tag instead of printing the hard coded value i'm going to just call here php script and in this script i'm going to say if is set session cart then i'm going to call it count function and in this count function i'm going to call the cart variable and store that count in the count variable like this and just after that i'm going to say echo in in the double quote i will paste this spawn tag right here and instead of specifying the zero here i'm going to just say count here right and just after that in the else statement if the session variable is not being set i'm going to just copy this echo statement print it here and just specify zero here right save the changes and when i reload this application you can see you have two products in the card now what if i want to add one more product in the card so if i just click on this first product i'm going to get three here because i have three product in my card now let me show you how to display this card item in the card.php file now the type is to display these card items in card.php file so instead of displaying these items down here in the table i'm going to create a new file card.php and display all the cards product one by one and along with that i'm going to display the total of the product now let me show you how we are going to do that so we are going to first create a new file so i'm going to right click on the shopping and just select php file and just say card.php so i'm going to just say here card now in this file i'm going to first add the html5 snippet and just change the title to 
cart and just after that in the head section i am going to copy this header links and paste it in the card head and just copy these script tags and paste it in the card.php file down here just after that what i want i want to specify the background color to the body so i'm going to specify here class and specify bg light color just after that i want to add this header to this card.php file so i'm going to just say here i'm going to call the php script here and just say here require once php header.php right save the changes reload the application and when it and when you click on this card you are going to get this page on this page you can see you have this card.php file now in this file you can see you don't have anything because you don't started this session yet i want to display the card items one by one here and display the total on the right side so i'm going to create here in the body section oops in the body section right here i'm going to create a division tag with the class container fluid in this class i'm going to just create a row and specify padding x 5 so i'm going to specify this padding to the left and the right side just after that so i'm going to create here two columns so i'm going to just say here call md7 so i'm going to specify seven column space to this division type and then i'm going to create here a div with call md5 so i'm going to specify five column space to this division type in the first column i'm going to just create here a division tag with the class shopping cart and in this div i'm going to create h6 heading tag and specify my cart and just after that specify horizontal row here save the changes reload the application and you can see this type of result now just after this horizontal row i'm going to create here a form tag and in the action attribute i'm going to just say here cart.php specify method get and just specify class cart items in this form i'm going to create a division tag with the class border along with that i'm going to just specify a rounded bootstrap class now in this division tag i'm going to create here a new row with row class and bg white class now in this row i'm going to create three columns so i'm going to first specify call md3 so i'm going to specify three column space to this division tag call md6 I'm going to specify six column space to this division tag and call md3 so i'm going to specify three column space to this division tag right now in the first div i'm going to call image with the source attribute and in this source attribute i want to specify an image i'm going to just specify a path of an image so i'm going to just say here upload product one and the alt attribute is going to be image one just after that i'm going to specify class img fluid and then just after this division tag to this column this six right here i'm going to call h5 reading tag with the class padding top two and specify text product one then i'm going to call small tag and then specify class text secondary and here i'm going to just specify seller and just specify the daily tuition name so i'm going to just see here daily tuition just after that i'm going to call h5 reading tag with padding top two and specify the price of the product so i'm going to just say here 5.99 and the last i'm going to add here a button so i'm going to just say here button type submit then specify class btn btn warning and then specify text save for later add another button here with the type submit specify class btn btn danger and along with that i'm going to specify margin x to and specify name remove and just after that i'm going to specify text remove save the changes and when i reload this application you are going to see we have this card with product image product name seller name price the save button and the remove button right 
Now just after that in the third column right here I want to create here a quantity section where the user can increase and decrease the quantity of the product. So I'm going to just create here a division tag, create a button. The type of the button is button. Then I'm going to specify the class BTN, BG light. Then I'm going to specify border and just say rounded circle. Just after that, I want to add here an icon. So I'm going to call I tag here and specify class pass fa minus right just after that copy the statement paste it here change this icon to plus and just after that between these two buttons i'm going to add input tag input type text the value of this text is one specify class Form control specify width 25% specify display block property inline so I'm going to specify the bootstrap class the inline and save the changes reload the application and you can see you have this product right here I want to center this country section so I'm going to just specify here to this third column padding y5 save the changes and when you reload this you can see you have this quantity section to the center. Now, if you want, you can add this plus and minus functionality as well using JavaScript. I'm not going to do that because this is just a pure shopping cart tutorial. So just after that, I'm going to just select this shopping cart class, this one, and just call this class install.css file right here. So I'm going to just say here shopping cart, specify padding, 3%, and 0%. Save the changes, reload the application and as you can see I have this padding on the top here. Now just after that open the card.php file and write here. Now let me just remove this padding left from here. So I am going to specify padding left 0. Now what I want, I want to display all the cards item here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just cut this form, cut this form right from here, open the component.php file and in this file, I'm going to create a new function and name this function cart element and in this function, I'm going to paste this form. So I'm going to create here a variable element and just store this form in this element like this right and just say here echo element just after that what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass here parameters so the first parameter is product image so i'm going to just say here img pass this img in the source attribute so i'm going to just say here instead of calling this double code i'm going to just say here product img create a new parameter and name this parameter product name and specify this product name right here instead of specifying this product one I'm going to call product name here just after that create a new parameter product price and specify that right here product price save the changes so when we call this function, we need to specify these parameters. Open the card.php file. Now in this file, I'm going to first call the PHP script on the top right here. And just after that, I'm going to first start the session. So I'm going to just say here, session start. And just after that, what I want, I'm going to just require a file. So I'm going to just say here, require once. And just call php create db.php file. Along with that, I'm going to just say require once PHP and just import component.php file. Just after that, I'm going to create here a new instance db and just create a new create db instance and specify the first parameter which is the database name product db and just specify the table name product db. So using this instance, you can access the get data method. Right here, just after this horizontal row, 
I'm going to call a PHP script here. Now, just after that, in this PHP script, what I want, I want to get the ID from the session variable. To do that, I'm going to create here a variable product ID and just call here add a column function, then specify the session variable here, cart, and just after that, specify the key. So I'm going to just say here product ID. So now we have this product ID array in this variable. Now, just after that, I'm going to get the data from the database. So to do that, I'm going to create here a variable result, then call the instance db and call the get data method. So we have this result in this variable. I'm going to call while loop, call the row and just call my SQLI fetch associative array and just call result here. Now in this while loop, I'm going to check if the shopping cart item ID is equal to the row ID. So let's say I want to display all the shopping cart ID product one by one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just call for each loop here and just say here product ID as ID, right? And just say if row of ID is equal to ID, oops, I need to just specify here dollar sign like this. Then, then I want to print the product information on the document. So I'm going to call this function card element now, right here. So I'm going to just say here card element, specify the row. The first argument is the product image. So I'm going to just call here product image. The second argument is product name and the third argument is product price. Save the changes and when I reload this application, I can see I have three products here. Now just after that, I want to specify some padding to this card items. So I'm going to just open the style.css file and just call card items. And to select the second card, I'm going to specify this plus sign then call the card items and then call the padding 2% and 0% right now now what if i don't have anything in the card section in that case i need to specify message here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just get rid of this php script and just say here if is set call the session variable card if we have the session variable set I'm going to call these statements else I'm going to just say here echo and in the double quote I'm going to call h5 wedding tag and just say here card is empty save the changes now just after that I want to display how many products are there in the card and display the total price of the product so I'm going to display that on the right side of the screen right here so I'm going to open the card.php file and in the second column right here in the call md5, I'm going to call a div with the padding top 4. And in this div, I'm going to call h6 heading tag with the text price details. Now, I'm going to first add horizontal row. Then I will create a division tag with the row class. Along with that, I'm going to call price details class. And in this div, I'm going to create here two columns of call md6. So I'm going to just say here call md6 and do the same here with call md6. Right? In the first column, I'm going to just call a PHP script. And in this script right here, I'm going to say a is set session card. Then I want to just print how many cards item in the session variable. So I'm going to call here count variable, call this session variable right here and just store that count in the count variable and just say here echo and in the double quote I'm going to call h6 heading tag and in the h6 heading tag I will say price count items and just close this statement and in the else statement right here I'm going to print this echo statement again 
and just get rid of this count and specify 0. Reload the application. You can see I have this type of result. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just specify here call MD4, specify the offset. So I'm going to just see here offset MD1, specify border around it, specify margin top 5 and BG white color. Along with that, I'm going to specify height 25%. Save the changes. When I load the application, you can see this type of result. Just after that, just after the script, I'm going to just call here H6 heading tag and specify delivery charges text. And then specify horizontal row, add the H6 heading tag and just say amount payable. And in the second column right here, I'm going to add H6 heading tag, call the PHP script. And in this script, I'm going to just echo the total price of the product. So I'm going to just create here a new variable right here. Total is equal to zero. And then just call this variable right here. So I'm going to just say here total is equal to total plus row of product price. But right now, this statement is going to return a string. We need to convert the string into integer. So I'm going to pass parenthesis here and just call integer. So we have the total price in this total variable. So I'm going to pass this variable right here. Total, save the changes, reload the application, and you can see the total price of this product. Don't forget to specify dollar sign here. When you reload the application you are going to get this type of result now just after that just after this h6 heading tag i'm going to call one more h6 heading tag with the class text success specify text free then add horizontal row then add h6 heading tag again call the dollar sign call the php script here and in this PHP script, just call echo total price. Now what I want, I want to add some padding to this price details. So I'm going to just open the style.css file and I'm going to call this price detail class. So I'm going to call this class in style.css file right here. So I'm going to call here price detail, select the H6 heading tag and say padding 3% and 2%. Save the changes and when I reload this application, you are going to get this type of result. Now the last thing we want to do is, when we click on this remove button, I want to remove this particular card. I am going to just open the component.php file and right here, in this action attribute, I am going to just specify here action. So I am going to just call here question mark action is equal to, when I click on the remove button, I want to pass a variable, so I'm going to just add here and person, create a variable id and then specify the value. Now what I want, I want to specify the id when we click on this remove button. So I'm going to pass here another parameter, product id and pass this product id right here. When we call this function, we need to pass this product id. So save the changes and open the card.php file. When we call this function right here, we need to pass this product ID. Specify comma here, call the row and pass ID here. Save the changes. And now when we click on this remove button, I want to return this particular ID of the product. To do that, I'm going to create here if block if is set post and I'm going to say here remove. When I click on this remove button, I want to print the product ID. So I'm going to just say here print R and just get ID. Save the changes, reload the application. When I click on this remove button, oops, I need to just specify here post here, method post. 
and when I click on this button, I want to print the particular ID. So when I reload the application and when I click on this product, I'm going to get this ID right here, right? When I click on the second product, I'm going to get this ID on the top. What I want, I want to get this ID and remove this particular product. So I'm going to get rid of this print R and just so here if get if get action is equal to remove and then call the for each loop and in the for each loop I'm going to call the session variable cart and then I will just say as key and value just after that I will just say here if value of product ID is equal to get ID then now what we are going to do is I'm going to check if the product ID is in the card I'm going to remove that particular product ID so I'm going to just unset that product ID I'm going to just call unset session card and just specify here key right just after that call the echo statement in the double quote call the script tag just close it and just say here alert and just call product has been removed right then just specify echo statement and just in the script tag redirect this page so I'm going to just say here window.location is equal to cart.php save the changes now if I want to remove this particular card then I can click on this remove button so when I click on this remove button this card is removed from the list so you can see the message product has been removed when I click on this ok button you are going to see we don't have this card in the card list right and you have two cards in your bucket now let's say I want to remove this first card when I click on this remove button you can see the message product has been removed when you click on this ok button you have only one card in the bucket as simple as that now that's it if you have any question you can ask me anytime don't forget to like this video if you find anything useful don't forget to comment and I will see you in the next tutorial